What is up, my friends? Hey, John from Road Reality here, bringing you another Road Reality After Dark video. Because controlling the light when it's dark out in this room is so much easier than trying to do this during the daylight. But anyway, we're 10 seconds in and I already digress. <laughs> but hey, I had a couple of viewer requests after this video. The footage is on screen now. Yes, that is sped up footage from this, my GoPro Max. I had it mounted on the fairing on my street glide and I did some speed ramping and some other techniques. So today we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you adjustment clips, speed ramps, workflow tips. I got a whole smorgasbord on the table for you today. And thank you to the viewers that asked, how did you do that? Because I'm always happy to share my secrets and you know that. So even before we start, if there's something that you don't quite understand in here, uh, let me know in the comments below. And if there's something else you've seen me do and you wanna know, well, gee, John, how'd you do that? Also, let me know in the comments below. And before we do get started, I have already done tutorials on speed ramping and editing in 360, and we're gonna build on the fundamentals of those videos today. So if you haven't seen those, I highly recommend watching those tutorials and then coming back here to level up. <laughs> Golly, that just sounds weird. Anyway, so before we get started, this is what the 360 degree section looked like in my timeline. You can see I did some keyframing on the audio and I'll show you that in a little bit. And we've got some other interesting things going on. So we're gonna try to recreate the magic, if you will. And I'm gonna show you how to add a little pizzazz to your videos, cause that's always fun, right? And I'm gonna try to simplify this just a little bit because I don't really wanna go through the whole thing. I mean, this took like three hours for me to edit that section of the video. Everything else is easy, but getting that the way I wanted was fairly time consuming. So the first thing we start with is our multicam clip. If you are doing multicam stuff, and I've got tutorials already on how to do a multicam, but in this case, I had two or, yeah, I had two long clips here but rather than make two separate multicam clips, or when I do my three or four hour rides, I'll end up with upwards of 50 clips. You can just throw them in here, and if you'll notice here, there's a gap. It's a three second gap. And if you just line up, like I've got these synced up, and then if you just split them out by three seconds, when you come back into your timeline and you're using it, you'll see that it's got these gaps here, and I'll zoom in on one. And then if you just do a control B for break, and a control B for the break there and hit delete. Now you've got two separate clips. So that's what our multicam looked like. It's a couple hours long. And now you'll see we've got some markers. Ignore those for now. We'll get into it in a second. And to avoid copyright claims, I have already gone through and set the keyframes. And it's as easy as going into the audio on here. You just click on your audio and then we'll click the audio tab here. And you can see volume is minus 100. But if I click right here on this keyframe icon, if you don't see this, this is the inspector window. We're gonna click on there and we'll click somewhere in the future and we can click it again or as soon as you change it, it will create a, a keyframe. But you can see as I raise this up, you can see it start to bring the volume up. And I won't hit play because I'm really not keen on getting a copyright strike. So I will control Z these two things out. And now you see that I have a couple of speaking bits and then the end of it is talking but what I did was I went through and when I got to these sections, I used my M key or you can click here on the marker and it creates a marker for your timeline. Kind of just to remind me, hey, this is where I need my 360 cam to face me. So now that we have our markers done, that's the easy part. Let's let the computer grind. We're going to right click, switch multicam clip angle to max, which we're going to use for almost all of this, and then we can go in and do our speed ramping. So let's do that real quick. So now we're gonna mess with in the middle. So we're gonna go to our markers, and if you notice, it, it clicks right to my markers, which really helps me set my speed points properly. And if you need to adjust them later, that's not a problem, you can do that. And we're just gonna add a bunch of speed points where our markers are, because these two sections here, let's zoom in on that and bring it up a little bit so you can see. 
These two sections are where I'm gonna be talking and we need to be at regular speed for that, 100%, but everything else can be fast. And just for the tutorial, we're gonna change our speed to 800. And you will find, at least on my computer, I find 800 really crunches on my computer and makes it not happy. So it will be choppy. And you can see, even here, it's a little bit choppy. And we haven't even applied our 360 camera plug-in. So what we're gonna do is go over here to my power bins. If you don't see that, view, show power bins, it's right there. Make sure it's visible. And I save an adjustment clip, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, but I save an adjustment clip that has my 360 camera settings. Notice here, it's all wonky, but as soon as we get to here, boom shakalaka, we've got, I know that is such a 90s term, but it, it's reframed. And so what we're gonna do is click on it, control C, come down here and say Alt V. And all we need to do is copy over our plugins and you see it went wonky. Well, we're done with this. We can delete that with a backspace, not a ripple delete, but just a remove. And now all of this is in 360. When it plays back, you can see just how choppy it is. So now that we have that set, we really want our default angle and we'll go over to effects to be something other than one, probably two. Yeah, two. So that shows the forward view and we've already sped it up. Now what we can do is we can click on each individual and remember we can drag this up. We can click, click on each individual keyframe and change it to ease in and out. As you can see, I've got that nice smooth keyframing. So we're just gonna delete it right about there, just make things cleaner for us. So this is the bulk of what we're working with. And now we've got smooth keyframes. Let's, uh, let's jump this up a little bit more so you can see we've got our smoothed out keyframes so that the ramping works properly. And if you notice, here's a quirk with the keyframes. Remember, I'm always complaining about the keyframes. Here's a quirk with them. Yep, that's where the first keyframe is for the audio. So what we need to do is to go fix that. So luckily we have our spots here and here and there, and you can literally just come in and say, boop, go 10 frames forward. So we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit, reset it to zero, and then change this one to zero. Come over here, drag it all the way down, do the same thing here. So now we have this basic setup. What we need to do is some of our keyframing for the actual 360. So we'll make sure effects is selected here, which will cause this to show camera sequence. We'll click that, uncheck retime speed, and it's all one. So now if I click on that, if I try to click keyframe, we'll make this a little bit smaller. See, it doesn't work. It didn't create a keyframe. And this is what a couple of people asked me was, how did you keyframe it? Because you just complained about keyframing not long ago and not working. So I'm gonna show that to you right now. Let's get back into it. So it didn't work. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and we can drag this down. I love it. It's great. We've got plenty of room, see everything, scroll down and camera animation parameters. That's where you wanna click keyframe. We'll go one second and then we'll hit four, which pulls us here. And then we can go shift right three seconds and then we'll click a keyframe. And if you want just a quick switch, go right arrow one and then we'll put in seven. And when you play that back and it's gonna be a little bit choppy, but you'll see over this next second, it's gonna swing over to me and then it's gonna real quickly pop up. And basically I did that throughout the rest of this clip, which we don't need to see again. But then stuff like here, and we're gonna reset our camera angles back to that. But if you see here, I'm talking about, I'm talking about this sign. What I really wanna show is my Hero 10 because the Hero 10 is a little bit clearer and a little bit higher. So what I'll do is Alt and left mouse click to select that and then hold down Alt and drag it up and I've created a duplicate. And now I can right click, switch back to Hero 10, go to Effects, delete out Reframe 360. And now you see how much better that looks if I use D and disable it. This is the same frame from the Max's angle. And then if I re-enable it with the D key, 
boom, you can see it's much clearer. And if I bring it up full screen, you can see 12 miles, 18 minutes. So what we need to do is we've slowed down here. We'll hit control V and mind you making a duplicate now, really it just preserves the speed ramping so that all the frames match up properly. And we'll go to like right about here and we'll hit control break. And if I disable both of those, then zoomed in here now, so we don't play too much. You can see that it goes directly from the hero max to the hero 10 footage. And then it'll go right back as soon as this is done to the Hero 10, and or to the Max rather. And there you go. So that's how I overlaid that. But then you see, we had a whole bunch of other stuff, right? Back here at the beginning, we had all of these overlays. So these are adjustment clips. Let's dive into adjustment clips and what I use them for and how handy they are. So first of all, in our effects library, under effects, adjustment clip, we'll drag one down. Pass it around, 98 adjustment clips on the wall. And you can see we've got it. So what we can do is we can take the max and we'll do a control C, alt V, and we will copy plugins. And now you can see here that our effects has the reframe 360 in it. And this copies all of your camera settings and everything else. And then all you have to do is drag it up into here and you can see it added it. And you can use F2 to rename it, tutorial but I don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it. Right click, remove selected clips, delete. And then that saves it for future use. Another handy thing for adjustment clips is all that fancy color correction. So back here at the start, you can see I've got cropping. So all this adjustment layer does is if we open up our cropping, and if you ever see something over here that just has the one line, click on it and it'll expand. You can see that based on the arrows here, we have keyframes set, and I've got it set up for 1080 resolution, but you can see that we have several keyframes. And if I zoom in, you'll be able to see them better. See, one second, one second, usually that's a second. Yeah, one second. And that gives us our cropping. And here we've got our teal orange LUT. And it's uh, some freebie I downloaded somewhere, but if we disable that, so this is the top most uh, active item, and we click on our color tab icon here, and yours may say color, but I removed the labels. You can tell it's got the grid icon. We have a LUT applied. So if I go to my LUTs, I have a LUT installed called teal orange. And you can select all of these. You can make your own, but applying the teal orange LUT changes how the footage looks. And that's another thing that you can drag into your power bin. Now, here's the cool part. If you notice, see how these uh, darker triangles are? It's because I've used the handles here. All this does is it fades out whatever the adjustment clip is doing. And it may be better seen here where I created this sunset adjustment. We'll go back to our color tab and you can see I didn't do anything here, but I changed the saturation, the highlights, the shadows, and I gave it a little bit extra contrast. And this is a sunset adjustment that I found works well for GoPro footage, basically at sunset. And by changing the handle on that, you can see right here that it's a little bit darker when I disable it, and then it's a little bit brighter. So it's just changing a little bit, but here's the big one. See that? That's a big difference. This is my Rider View color correction. I use this same adjustment clip on all of my videos at different opacities. So we're gonna dive into that in a second too. But this is what I use to make my Hero 9 footage when it's mounted on my fairing look closer to the Hero 10 footage. And it also makes me more visible in frames. So let's take a look at that now. So the Rider View Color Correction. It's another one that's in my power bins under adjustment clips. I save it all here, yeah. Ooh, good, good fun. But it, it also has handles. And we'll go over to our composite, normal 100%. And if you drag this down, so that's how you do the compositing. So it looks maybe a little bit more realistic there, but here we, we see more detail and I kind of want to see that detail. So especially if I bring this over, we'll bring it to here because we were looking at that earlier and this is all very similar. So you can see the fade out. So see how bright these concrete barriers are. And then we come in here and it's darker. See, because the GoPro was picking up different bit of color, different bit of color, but these handles are great. And you can apply a great many things 
to adjustment clips. So if we take some random footage here, it's not so random, it's what we were looking at earlier. And we wanna try a new adjustment clip, we'll drag it down here. You can apply any of the OpenFX filters. If you're using the studio version, you'll have all of them. The free version, it's a little bit limited, but in our case, we wanna do a film damage. So there it is, we drag it on, and now we've got this. And now why would you do this instead of just dragging that effect onto the footage itself? because if I change where I want it, it's pretty easy, just drag it back and forth. So that I think is pretty cool. And you can see that we've applied it and away we go. And like anything else, you can drag these adjustment clips right into your power bins. It's a way of doing presets. And I backspaced it out of there. So before we wrap this up, let's take a look at the final version of this timeline. We're gonna click on our spline button there and we'll click camera sequence and you can see just how many keyframes there were in this. That's kind of wild, huh? And hey, look at that, ooh, that's a glitch in DaVinci Resolve, yay. But if I zoom in, you can see that a lot of these are one frame jumps, but the, this one here has a, has a sweeping motion to it. It's animated, so it takes it a second to go from one to the other. But if we sort of bring this up a little bit, you can see that I basically picked a beat and did each on each of these beats a camera change, camera angle change. So that's one of the things you can do. Hey, look, there's that glitch again. You can look at the beats and be like, okay, one frame after the beat and there's my camera angle. And like I said, you can just go in here and click on the keyframe icon, use your keyboard shortcuts to go to the next frame or a second later. And here's another one that is animated. And of course it's choppy here, but this one did a whole, this one did a whole sweep. And then as soon as the beat hit, we go back to this one, this forward facing view. So you can edit with the beat using the inspector window. So hopefully that answers everybody's questions as to how I got the 360 footage to look and act the way it did in that video. It was a lot of fun. It was quite time consuming, but I think the end result was pretty good. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you like this sort of thing. And if you learned anything about speed ramping and adjustment clips and basic workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So if you did learn anything, don't forget to boop the like button. And if there's something else you wanna know, like I said before, leave me a comment below. I'll be happy to share with you how I get this thing to do what I do. And until next time, check out my DaVinci Resolve playlist here and go click on this random video that YouTube picked for you. It thinks it knows you. Hmm. Till next time. <laughs>